Well, at least it hit the floor. Hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Glad you could join me. Today we have a 2020 Chevrolet High Country. It's the Duramax. It has a check engine light that randomly comes on. I will, gotta be honest, I wasn't going to do a video on this because I didn't feel like I knew the system good enough to try to educate you guys because this is a fairly new truck. But now I've educated myself on the system and I've done some research and figured out that there's very little information out there on this system. So I decided I will bring you along and show you guys what I found and I'll go over the system with you. It's going to be, well, just come along. I'll show you what kind of codes it had and how to test these codes because there's very little information out there. Hopefully this will help you guys. Stay tuned because this should be very informational. Contact. So first of all, the customer stated that randomly the check engine light comes on. Sometimes it'll stay on for a while and then it'll go back off again. So we did a code scan, figured out that we had several codes here. Um, I did clear them. Like I said, before I decided that I'm gonna make a video on this, but no worries. I'm gonna go bring you guys back here exit the vehicle we're going to come in here and i do have it in sa saved data fortunately it's this one here so we've got three engine codes and it's a p1476 which is the particulate matter sensing element which is going to be our it measures the soot load in the exhaust so that's that's kind of a common issue with these things um it's got its own it's a it's like an oxygen sensor but it's not an oxygen sensor it looks like it with its own little computer if you know what i mean i'll show it to you um there's really not a whole lot of diagnosing to do on that the helpline was really not helpful at all because gm hasn't given out any information on that according to them but from what I know, um, this this one here, there's very little diagnosing on that because it's just the way it communicates and stuff. If I'm wrong, please feel free to connect, correct me. Now, these bottom two are related to each other. This is the low temperature coolant loop pump performance. Um, this is... Uh, little different uh p3196 this is an intake manifold tuning valve two actuator control circuit low voltage so what what i'm finding on this is these two codes are related this is both for the low temperature coolant loop pump now kind of like the if you're familiar with the six seven power stroke they have two cooling systems this one has the same thing now it's not to the extent that ford has on their 67 but this one also operates it has the engine cooling which provides obviously provides cooling for the engine and all that stuff but then we have a low temperature coolant what they call a low temperature coolant and it's just a small system um, i'm going to get you guys uh i got a piece of paper printed off that pretty much shows it and then i'll explain it right there okay hopefully this is clear enough for you guys but right here we have our radiator we have a this is our coolant pump here and this is our reservoir for our cooling system here this is a fuel cooler back here. They also call this the auxiliary uh, cooling system. I think GM calls it an auxiliary fuel cooler, I uh, believe is what they call it, something along that line. Not 100% sure what that is. Um, 
number three. Oh, uh, that is for the uh, emissions reductions fluid injector. So uh, I believe that's the fuel injector for the um, emissions system in the exhaust. So basically uh, we're just providing this is low temperature. Um, it's trying to cool the fuel down before it gets back into the fuel tank. And it's using antifreeze to do that. So what the code we're getting is for performance on this pump here. Now, what I've found is that you can activate that pump in the scan tool. And I activated the pump in the scan tool which on the snap-on scan tool, I'll show you guys where that's at. All right, so on our home screen on the scan tool, we'll come in the engine, come in the functional tests. We'll go to output controls, come down here to fuel. Uh, fuel, Let's see here, fuel cooling, I think, uh, no. Oh, here we go, low temperature loop coolant pump come in here and you can command this thing from in 10 percent increments to run 10 20 all the way up to 100 percent so i did that and i could tell that the pump was kicking on however it felt really rough now i'll show you guys what i should have checked to begin with as we notice here our cooling system is dry we're gonna have to fill this thing up and hopefully we didn't lose too much cool or that it didn't ruin the thing um, I don't know uh, it may have already damaged the pump the pump is on back order I don't know when we'll get it so we have nothing to lose by adding antifreeze that's going to take the decks cool and according to our service data we need to fill this thing up then we need to run the truck or we need to run the pump and get all the air bubbled or worked out of it so i've overfilled it just a little bit i believe not sure is that the minimum or max actually I think that's the level it's supposed to be at so it's supposed to be up to there and as we can see it is probably fairly dry so now um, I'm gonna go ahead and refill this top it off and then I'll uh, run that pump with our scan tool all right so we're going to run our coolant pump. Let's see what happens here. And it's going down. I'm running it at about 40%. Let's get our jug. We don't want that to run dry because we'll introduce air into it again. Oh, buddy. Not very good at pouring things when I'm a little flustered. Okay, let's bump that on up to 50%. Let's go to 60, 70. I suspect that as long as there's no damage to this pump, we're gonna be okay with this, hopefully at least possibly buy him some time. So as we can see, we're starting to discontinue the bubbling process. And we can hear it pump. So we know it's working. And it's pumping the way it should. Let's drop that down because I need to add a little antifreeze to it. Oh, 
Well, at least it hit the floor. All right, let's bump this back up to 100% duty cycle. So basically, I think what was happening is this pump probably got hot and was running dry with out all the with the coolant not being there. So with any luck, we'll be able to salvage this system. I hope. I hope we can. Fingers crossed, because not making any judgment here or anything, but GM, you guys going on strike have screwed us over a little bit. Not saying it's right or wrong, I don't know enough about it, but it sure does hurt us when we can't get parts for these things. So, let's back this off a little bit. We'll let it set for a little, see where it goes to. As we can tell, we don't have near the air bubbling through there that we did. But I'm going to leave it set for a little bit. I'll be back in a couple of minutes and we'll run this thing again. And let's see what happens. All right, it's been about five minutes. Let's put this thing in service mode. And we'll uh, go ahead and run that pump again and let's see if we can get more air out of it or if we've got most of the air out of it already so let's, uh, let's see what we got here all right let's bump that thing back up to 100 percent duty cycle Okay, all of our air is out of the system. Now, what we need to do is we're going to have to try to find out if there's a leak somewhere. So, perfect time to show you guys the system. It's also a low pressure system. The cap is a five PSI cap. There's not a whole lot of system pressure there. All right, so let's get this thing up in the air. I'm going to bring this scan tool down down here so we can control this thing. No need to keep it running right now. Okay. Up we go. Okay, so we're going to start here at the pump. Right here's our pump. There's our lines going up. I think this is our inlet into the pump. This is the outlet. So this uh, pump does have three wires. Uh, there's a power ground and then there's a communication wire which tells the computer that it's running or not running it's up to speed or it's not up to speed so um the lines go forward uh to our cooler up here which is i believe somewhere down here at the bottom um yeah up here We don't have any kind of leaks up here. That's hard to see because it's all boxed in there. But trust me, it's there. Then, I believe it comes back from what I've been seeing. Comes back through here. Continuing to check. Yep, there's our injector nozzle that it's cooling as well. These are lines to cool it comes back um, okay let's follow this on back here's our 
line coming back. I did do a transmission fluid exchange on this, so I've got a little bit of a mess there. I still got to clean up with a little brake clean. Comes back into our fuel cooler. This is our fuel cooler here. It comes back up. Back up through here. All the way back up. And then I believe it goes through... Maybe. Maybe it goes through the charge air cooler. I'm not sure. Not 100% sure on that. But we're not seeing any kind of leaks. So... I'm hoping that we just had an issue where the system possibly didn't get bled correctly or you know maybe it I don't know I'm guessing the system didn't get bled quite correctly and it was running low so um, let's try that we're gonna try this I'm gonna tell the customer that uh, he needs to keep an eye on that fluid level and hopefully we sal we're able to salvage that pump now i'm going to try to see how that thing runs compared to earlier that definitely sounds different and it feels better Okay. Yep. Let's see what happens. Bring that back to zero. All right, let's check for codes. Make sure, see if we've got any kind of codes here. No codes present. Okay. Uh, if nothing else, I'm pretty sure the codes for the sensor in the exhaust, the particulate sensor will go come back because I'm almost positive that that's going to be a known issue. So, uh, what we've got here is we've got this sensor here. Um, this pigtail comes up through here, goes uh, around, and the sensor is right here. Um, this is the sensor that we're looking at, looking for. Uh, this has its own communication box it takes readings of the air coming out and it calculates the soot load of this dpf system thanks epa so i checked all the wires here everything looks good my guess is we're going to need a new one of these which you get this along with the sensor so hopefully this was informational for you guys. I know that I learned a lot by looking over the system and doing some research on it and figuring out how the system works. So hopefully this will help you guys. I know there's not a lot of information out there on that system or not that I could find. And hopefully this is helpful to you guys if it is let me know that in the comments below also make sure you tap that like button share this video and subscribe to the channel doesn't cost you guys a thing sure helps me out a bunch i appreciate it most of all you guys don't forget to have yourselves a great day i appreciate it till the next time i'll catch you all later